Right, you ready? Yep. I really overthink videos. Camera, too. lights, action. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Look who I'm joined with. Hey, yeah. Have I ever done a video like this? No. I actually don't think you've we ever haven't. solely been we've on We've done my... vlogs, like we've done a lot of vlogs. Yeah, yeah. but I don't think we've solely done like a no, think... sit down video together. No, saying that though, the with first- Jed. Yeah, we did it like, that was like the first thing. I barely knew you. I, I was know. like three days in and Jed was like, we go and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We did a, um, what was it? Who knows who better with Jed? Yeah. And like, it was like that like awkward bit where me and Safa only knew for each other for like three days and it was just like, I didn't want to like be competitive with you because like, I didn't know you and it was just so awkward. You yeah. were so shy. Mm. So, so shy. so shy. Like if anyone watches that video, you can tell how like nervous and shy I am in that video. Cause mm. I think Jed goes like, you have to like make your own sounds to like kind of like press the button to like lock in your answer. And I went, I, I squealed. <laughs> I squealed. Honestly, yeah. I'd rather people not go back and look at that. But I would actually <laughs> love to like redo react those sort of videos now yeah. and react to that. Yeah, That'd it'd be, be so, so fun. But anyway, so I'm joined with Imogen and we thought we'd just do like a girl chat as, do you know what? I think people will be surprised with how close we are. Yeah. There's boundaries that we've started to cross and it's a bit mm -hmm. like it's we'll get into it but like there's it's weird because like there's certain topics of conversation you can talk to me about but i can't talk to you because obviously like i'm dating your brother and yeah. that's a bit strange but now <laughs> i feel like we do we kind of just say everything we feel to each other to be Don't honest tell that. <laughs> most of the questions are more like girl topics in general but there was a question that i thought was funny and it's just really similar to what we've been talking about and i don't really know to be honest i've kind of had to think about it but imogen hasn't seen any of these questions and it was what's your initial thoughts on each other oh i know that one instantly you instantly know i think it was what? it was such a scary day for me <laughs> oh god okay no i think it's like it's it's one of those like days where like it stays in your brain because bearing in mind so obviously me and jed long distance then obviously he met my family and then i came down to brighton to meet you guys mm -hmm. and not to paint jed in a bad light but he literally went if my family doesn't get on with you like we're gonna struggle to go forwards in this relationship because jed's such a family guy do you know mm -hmm. what i mean like he would have struggled in a relationship if i didn't get on with any of you guys so i was sitting there in this taxi palms sweaty knees are heavy that's not the lyrics but he told me this in taxi so i'm sitting there like oh my god i've got to make such a good impression got to make such a good impression and obviously i get there and you were in the kitchen with your mum. i thought fuck you know this girl is short <laughs> that is my initial that's impression what you thought. yes that yes, is what you saw. So short. Like, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, I think Jed had mentioned that you were like small, but like, I don't know. But if you see, like, I feel like you're, you give like such woman vibes. Right. So I was thinking, five, 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 six. And you're the so first small. thing you thought about me was, she's so short. I was gobsmacked about how small you were. Because in my head, it didn't compute. Like, it didn't compute. That is because so funny. I don't know why. And I don't know if anyone, like, I don't know, fans like meeting you or anything, like, experiences this as no, well. No, but every I, time, every time people meet me, the one Thing they say is you're so short yeah. in real life like don't get me wrong like you were so lovely do you know what i mean like i, I initially thought oh my god like she's so lovely like had nothing to worry oh, about god, thank god because i was literally but... thinking where the fuck you going with this <laughs> no 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 like literally had nothing to worry about like you were so nice and obviously like that was obviously like such a big tiktok era so like we'd always have like fun with like little bits and bobs but my initial thought <laughs> Oh, shit. Like, honestly, I'm surprised my mouth wasn't on the floor. <laughs> Did you know? Like, wait, what? I actually can't. I'm not that short. It was a shock to the system. Like, I don't I'm know sure, why. Like, I am, I'm aware. Like, I am yeah. quite short. That is so funny. But yeah, I actually can't believe that. It was just such a weird experience. We were all in the garden and we had Wendy made yeah, lovely wraps. This is, this is the first time I, I don't remember being in the kitchen when I met you because my no. memory is shocking. I remember yeah. coming outside and you guys were eating food and then I came and joined you for food. No, you were there when I initially walked into the house. I don't remember that. Oh, really? But then I was outside and we were, we were literally sat around the little, little gazebo table yeah we sat around the table and we'd had like these chicken wraps and a salad i dropped three pieces of cucumber i was that stressed eating i was literally shaking with my fork i missed my mouth three times because i was i was just so nervous mm. so we were having a normal conversation darren wendy both lovely it was such a nice lunch but i was so but i do think that's normal though i feel like yeah. everyone gets nervous like i was so nervous to meet lewis's family i was chucking cucumbers on my <laughs> i can't even tell yeah. you how shy imogen was for so long. That's that's all I really thought of you. I just thought like oh, she's yeah, really we, cute. God, we really went on a tangent there. <laughs> no, no. What was your first I, remember, <laughs> I remember thinking she's so cute, but she's yeah. so shy. <laughs> I remember thinking you and Deb were really cute though. Like, do you remember when we all went down to the beach and you were throwing the donuts, the seagulls? That was really cute. And you guys were really cute and they kept going off and being all goals and I was like, they're so cute. Anyways, yeah. Right. <laughs> Moving on from us, let's talk girl things. Girlies. <laughs> What should I do about negative friends in my life? Cut them out. Cut them out. Say bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> 
leave it at that. Cut yeah. it out. Waste your time. I waste think, your energy. I think we've definitely all had like that one friend that has literally just sucked the living life out of you and mm. not like like I was saying earlier. Like I've had friends before that I just haven't been able to be myself around. And I think that's the worst thing you can do. Mm. Not only like for yourself, but like yeah. And also as well, do you know what I think is you're never gonna change how somebody else acts, no matter what you t- whether no, this so is in true. a relationship or a friendship. You will mm. never change that person if they act that way mm. it's because they want to act that way so you're never going to change it you're basically accepting that by being in that friendship with them yeah cut them out i mean it's hard like it's easier said than done do you know what i mean you can't just like cut them out and say goodbye sometimes like it is hard especially like if it's a group situation do you mm. know what i mean you have friends because i know that i had a group situation where like i liked some of them but there was like i don't know single thing there was one girl <laughs> there was one girl and i felt like yeah she just became very much of a dictator would make certain people feel different ways and like purposely leave someone out or things like that and like it was it was such a bad group dynamic mm. but again it's one person against like this big group and to then offset that entire dynamic like it's hard but i mean i think that's definitely something that you learn as you get older as you do you do you choose your friends yeah whereas when you're in school i feel like do you know what i mean there's only a certain amount of people you can be friends with unless you want to sit on your todd which i did for a little while even if you don't want to like fully cut them out just don't put in effort that they don't put in yeah or don't don't, don't, don't waste your yeah, even if it's like obviously these are extremes but like don't be a victim to their bullying do you know what i mean mm. if they're making you feel a certain way then you've got to tell them you're making me feel like this like please stop like it's not nice mm. and hopefully if they're a decent enough person they should do you know what i mean change their actions or and if you they just don't take, that's yeah, your answer yeah you just take a step back from them and you focus on the people that are around you that you do love and you care for mm. exactly that your friendships i think are some of the most important relationships in your entire life yeah, like they're the yeah your friendships are your family that you choose yeah is that oh exactly that like us even though we're actually gonna be family but cute Ew. She's cringing. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> okay. Sex drive fluctuating. I feel like I'm either super horny or not at all and so unbothered lol. I mean, speaking firsthand, I feel like this is just normal. I think it's so normal and it's not talked about enough. Yeah, and I'm I honest. feel like you shouldn't put pressure on I yourself. I feel like, like that it's is so normal. I feel like there is such a pressure to be ready for something and horny 24 mm. 7 and it's not a thing. And I think the thing is, though, is that women don't realise as well. It's obviously like you've got your cycle. Depending on different parts of your cycle, you're going to like your hormones are literally fluctuating like you can't control that mm. you genuinely can't control that i think there's such a pressure around actually being like, i think as well seven. especially if you're in a relationship i've had like friends that have come to me in the past and have been like well we're not like having sex anymore so does that mean like he doesn't like me or but like also i don't mm. really want to like i can't be bothered is that is that not normal like that is so normal yeah that's obviously going to happen over time i think as long as you still make an effort at the same time yeah i mean because the i think it's yeah. easy to like slip out of things because you get so used to not doing them yeah and like, i think you get comfortable in, in a you routine as well really quickly yeah i'm a girl who loves her bed loves watching Grey's anatomy and falling asleep mm. do you know what i mean as long as you're not finding yourself like oh god like i could imagine having yeah if you're getting the do you know what i mean then it, i feel like it's different yeah do never never force yourself to do something you never want to no. just to have like please someone else like <laughs> never do that but i think yeah it's definitely i mean it's so important to have this conversation with your partner as well and also make them aware that it's nothing to do with them it's just that that's how you're feeling in that current point, uh, moment in time because i mean it, it can affect like your partner's do you know what I mean? Like, oh God, like they don't want to have sex with me. Like that that's not a nice feeling. Do you know what I mean? But as long as you're being open with your partner saying that it's not you, I'm just not feeling it. In a relationship, there's so many other things to do than sex. Yeah. You can go on dates, you can have long walks, talks, cook dinner have dinner dates it's exactly not all about that. sex it's do you not know what I mean? when do you know oh, i'm not the best person to ask this when do you know if it's the right time to have the boyfriend round to sleep the reason i say i'm not the best is because my boyfriend stepped over the first time i met him yeah same however my situation was obviously that it was when it was covid time and you could have one person externally mm. inside your house so jedda traveled all the way up from brighton obviously first time meeting and obviously he's not going to travel all the way from brighton for a day so he slept over i think he stayed well, it was only meant to stay three days stayed a week and my parents obviously made him see in a separate room and we were very like and we just had this really weird thing where like obviously in the morning we had to like get up and like go and see each other and we opened like because basically the way that my house is set up is that there's two doors like my room and then spare bedroom Mm -hmm. and we opened the door at the same time and we were like oh it's fate we are like oh god we know each other so well but I think it's because like we were speaking for literally like three months before Mm, we'd ever met and then we'd spend the whole first day together and the whole next day and then we just I think it's when you feel comfortable yeah and within your own reason like you're in your own rights and I mean yeah with your situation it was during lockdown right and you live so far away mm. from each other with me and lewis he also lived in a different country so like he was driving down to my house we'd spent the day together he's not just gonna go home probably would have been weirder him almost going home when he's 
driven five hours to get here so it just made sense but again like we were speaking for such a long time before we'd actually yeah. like met each other and before he'd come down yeah. so like we knew so much about each other already but yeah i really don't think there is a right time like mm -hmm. even with this isn't obviously someone sleeping over but even like sleeping with someone i feel like there's such like a pressure that like you have to wait a certain amount of time and if you don't then blah blah like yeah, the like boys aren't gonna like you and, like, i think you should that. honestly just do what you feel like i feel like to no, some is. extent that's kind of true so many of my my friends who are in long term relationships slept with their boyfriend the first time they had met them and they're in long term relationships I've also got friends that have done that and they're not with the person I honestly so, I think it all depends on comfortability do you know what I, I think mean? it depends on that and I think it just depends on if they're the right person I don't think that's going to make a difference yeah. do you feel like being in your 20s is hard because I do lol yes yeah I've spoken about this quite a lot recently when I left uni it was the most overwhelming experience I think I've ever felt because I felt like Obviously uni, you were there Monday to Friday, like nine till five or what? Well, I personally was because I was at a dance college. Like that's just the way it was set up. And then coming away from that and realizing how many possibilities there are to life. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's what people also forget is like the world is your oyster. Like there's so many different avenues you can go down, even if it's not what you did at uni or whether it's a different trade to what you did your apprenticeship in or if it's that you haven't done anything at all and you've now got this like big wild world to go into. It's so daunting. Mm. And I think the thing is though, is you can try something for two years as well and then not like it. And that's also so fine. I think like navigating your 20s I think it's such a daunting thing but it's so exciting I think so because yeah. like we are still so young but mm. also I think it's so scary because sometimes I literally sit sit and have these realisations that I'm actually an adult like being yeah. in your 20s you are an adult <laughs> Yeah. like I have bills to pay and like that I find so stressful yeah. like I don't feel like I should be doing that no, even I feel like I'm in my 20s like why am I paying these bills <laughs> like why am I yeah. having to sort this out like it's so much stress but also like Imogen said it's such an exciting time as well because mm. I feel like it's the age where there's it's so scary if you don't know what you want to do but also yeah. it's the age where you have so many opportunities yeah. and I feel like actually 20s everyone actually says that 30s are the best years of your life I and I feel like 20s, it's because so really yeah. I feel like 20s is good because you figure out what you want to do you might not figure out that straight away but like you're so young that you can go travel you can do mm. this you can go to uni like there's yeah. so many options and then 30s I feel like you figure out exactly what mm. you want but yeah because saying that like well what well, well, well one like traveling like going to australia was such an eye-opener that there is literally like a whole nother way of life on the other side of the world it's completely different to ours that was like the weirdest thing i think that was such a reality check that you can genuinely choose that if you wanted to do that you could and i think it's that choice mm. do you know what i mean of actually having that choice is the craziest thing but i was also reading this post the other day and i think it was something like say you have gone to uni the typical age to finish uni is whether you're 21 or 22 or obviously if you've done a doctorate like it's a lot longer but people were saying like when you're in your 20s like say you turn 22 that's only two years after you've been a teen so you're 22 yeah. Five. that's only five years after you've been a teen mm. and that is so young like you're literally like i think it was oh it said something like you you were like 22 but you're two years old you're two years older than a baby no three years I need to, yeah, I need to find the post because it's something about like, you're still a baby because we're all babies. Okay. Babies living lives. Babies, <laughs> babies that have their own apartments and houses. And like, that's the thing. Me and Jed, it's really like, it's imposter syndrome. Like me and Jed will wake up. Well, not we won't wake up. We'll be up at like 11. And like, we can go make cheese toasties out of free will. If I lived at like home, my mum would be like, no, you're not making a cheese toasty. It's 11 o'clock, but I'm my own adult. So if I wanted a cheese toasty at 11, yeah. I could go and get a bloody cheese toasty. I mean, I know that a lot of people still live at home and like things like that. But I think, yeah, it's choices. It's just crazy. It is. It is. It is. Like, there's so many opportunities and I feel like I have a lot of responsibilities but being in your 20s your what? calendar freaks me the no, I, like, I, trust it's, me. I yeah. feel like I have a lot of yeah a lot of responsibilities but in my personal situation I do like mm. I feel very much like an adult yeah which and I, I hate, think I think but... the thing is though is obviously like in your job I feel like a lot of people are like oh like what possibly could you do like Monday to Friday oh, genuinely a lot. never met someone busier in my entire life like just like I've got to schedule it <laughs> When yeah. I see stuff. Because her calendar has gone so crazy. Like, it's amazing, like, all the work you're doing. Do you know what I mean? But it's it's nuts. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to say, most people in their 20s, maybe not so much in my situation, but you don't really have that many responsibilities. So mm. you should take every opportunity yes. that you get. There's so many opportunities that, like, I don't know, even, like, Jed and Imogen, they told me something they had been DM'd about earlier. And they, like, laughed about it. And I was like, why would you not no, just go meet them? Funny. 
No, but why would you not yeah. just go meet them? Like, even if you don't want to do it, like, hear them out. Hear yeah. them out and listen, because you never know. Like, that mm. could be such an amazing opportunity. Like, you should just take everything when you're in your 20s. Like, I know it's really scary and you don't know what the end result's going to be, but I think that's, like, the most exciting part about life. If somebody said to me, oh, I can tell you what your life is going to be like in five years, well, I don't want to know. Mm. I wouldn't want to know that. I don't think any of us would want to know that. No, no, no. I think my biggest word of wisdom is for everyone to go to Australia. Okay, my words of wisdom to <laughs> <laughs> different my words of wisdom is i feel like you're never too old to start something and you, you're never too old to change something to change something if, yeah if i like for example i mean i did a degree in ballet and contemporary do i now want to do said ballet and contemporary no is that so fine hell yeah and that's what i'll tell myself <laughs> struggling with long distance at the moment how i thought this was quite a good one because we're both been i've been there it. you're going through it i'm going through She's it in the trenches. Through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah long distance is hard but i think even when me and jed were like there communication is your best friend if both people want to make it work it's gonna work uh-huh, honestly i feel like people get so scared about it and it can be scary but it can also be so what's it called distance makes a heart grow fonder and it really does mm-hmm. do you know what i mean you will know if you want to be with someone if you've gone through so much like distance and things like that and you're so, still so excited about seeing them and you still want to keep things going and as long as you're communicating and i know that obviously texts can be taken wrong so many times and if you're arguing on text i think that's the worst thing like just pick up the phone and call someone and never go to bed angry that's mm-hmm. my biggest one do you know what I mean? And you will literally sell through it, genuinely. It'll be I hard. actually spoke a lot about this on my recent podcast, so I don't want to like go on about it for too yeah. long either. But also, I was saying on my podcast, which sounds like I was doubting mine and Lewis's relationship, and that's never been the case at all. But when Lewis left, there was a part of me, wasn't wasn't I, where I was like, <laughs> I was just so scared because I was like, I just don't know what the future holds. Like, I think you're just so. I think again, like because of Lewis's, like it's not only a change in his place, it's a change in his career. His career, like it was a lot of change. For him as well yeah and exactly. i think staff is such an empath me. as well where i feel like you were preempting like how he was feeling and how he was do you know what i mean like mm-hmm. nothing to do with your relationship i think it was just like such a big change yeah and i think you were just you were just sad to see him go like as any normal couple would be mm-hmm. do you know what i mean and like yeah. so excited for him by the way yeah like, no of course wanted him to go 100 yeah. percent. just want to clarify that but yeah i remember at first like i was i don't know like super nervous about it and i was almost like working myself up because mm. no you were i couldn't understand why he wasn't worried about us Mm. like I couldn't understand because like all the time I kept kept saying to him well no now I've realised this like I kept thinking to myself maybe like he's just not that bothered because he isn't going to me what if it doesn't work Mm. well the reason he wasn't doing that is because he believed so much that it was going to work that he never had to worry about it and ever since I took that mindset I haven't one day been worried not that I ever like doubted our relationship at all Mm. but like because he went into it with no doubt and the mindset of we're gonna work because we love each other so much he never ever had to waste any energy on worrying and like I'm annoyed that I even did for those two days that I did and so I think long distance relationships are hard but if you if you believe that you guys are gonna work out and you communicate it's it's Mm. it flies by like no, it genuinely it flies by like it goes yeah. by so quickly and i think yeah you've got your own lives do you know what i mean like you're both of you are still so young and like y- you've got your own day to day and things like that so before you know it the day's over and you have that phone call and it's so mm-hmm. lovely but you'll see each other again so shortly yeah and it'll be like oh it'll be honestly it's I such a nice wait. feeling so it, is, it is honestly so nice like even when like jed goes away for a short amount of time now obviously like we live together so it's like a quite intense when he does go away but it's so nice to like see uh, see him again and mm-hmm. even like my parents they don't they, well they're still together they just don't live with each other when dad goes out for three weeks and he comes one week back and the cutest thing that melts my heart is how excited they get every single time they see each other do you know what I mean like they run they run and give each other like a little hug and they never used to be affectionate with like around me when I was younger like they were affectionate towards us but I don't know like I don't know sometimes like your parents just aren't do you know what I mean I Mm -hmm. grew up in an affectionate but non-affectionate family like we were very our affection was like play fighting do you know what I mean like, yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah it's just like the cutest thing like to see them like back together and like things mm. like that and it's it's such a nice feeling it's it just, is distance yeah. really does make the heart grow yeah. fonder no. and I think just like focusing like rather than being I don't know Lewis has gone for two weeks so far he's got eight weeks left but I'm not thinking he's got eight weeks left I'm like oh my god two weeks has gone so quick no, and also it's you're actually you'll be surprised tenth of the way that doesn't sound that great for your tenth of the way no I'm two tenths why are you oh fucking <laughs> two <laughs> yeah scrap that I'm not letting people think I'm done <laughs> 
Scrap that. <laughs> Please scrap that. We can't seem to like just answer something short and sweet. No. I just and love talking too much. This one's going to be another long one. Oh, really? Last well, one. Well, not really because we can't really actually say what it is. Do you girls have any projects planned together? I hope so. My favourite girl duo, which is so cute. Thanks, Emma. We do. We're so excited. So excited. Like So excited. So we've had, well, we can tell you that we've had a few meetings. We've had two recently that have been more towards the designing of a specific thing. And we're working on our final designs for said specific thing. You're giving more away than I thought you were going to give away, to be fair. Yeah, but it's not like they don't know. They just yeah. know it. Basically, we are launching something together, but we just can't say what it is. But if you watch me and Imogen, it's something we're so passionate about, like to the point, something we love, yeah. which we spend all our money that we earn on. Anyways, yeah, we yeah. can't really say much, can we? No. Well, the thing is we can, but we can't. No, we can't. Yeah, no, no. It's just because like, it's about making a reality, do you know what I mean? And I think mm -hmm. that's the most daunting thing is like, we've got all these like amazing ideas and we're so excited to get to start while well, we are working on it, do you know what I mean? But like, it's like all the proper like legitimate stuff's going in, like solicitors and things like that. And I'm like, ah, that's a scary mm -hmm. part. And it is, but, it's really yeah. scary because we easily could have had like our management's help, like there would have been so many people that could have helped us but we genuinely wanted to do this by ourselves to the point where we're on the phone calling manufacturers and like oh can we say that yeah it's actually been a scary process it's so exciting it's so funny because we're there like making these mood boards and we're like yeah la -di da and then it's like oh, oh we've actually got crap, to do the phone calls we've actually got to <laughs> you know find I mean? the we've people we've got it's yeah even things like i didn't even know like we're on the phone to the accountants and they're like yeah like you gotta decide like what kind of company you want like do you want shareholders to invest i'm thinking sorry yeah and like, like <laughs> we, we have a lot of goals with this business but we're sure it's gonna start yeah. Small little business, but, like I'm sure. Yeah, again, it's so, fun because we're learning so much, so much. Like, and again, it's never too late to yeah. start something. No, exactly. So. And like, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's such a process. Yeah. But we're very excited about it, and we're sure that everyone's absolutely gonna like, die for it when it comes out. Hopefully, because oh, oh, we have so the much attention to detail yeah, that we're putting in. We have so much passion behind it. Like even like talking about it, like we just get so mm -hmm. excited. Anyways, I feel like we should probably wrap up the video because we were. So <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna hate yourself when you look back at whatever you just did then. What did you just do? You can't call, bye -bye. you can't call me cringe. You're cringe back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we love you. <laughs> we love you. We love you. See, I do it cuter than you. <laughs> I wasn't doing it seriously. Roll okay, down the right. windows. Anyways, we need to go. Bye. <laughs> Bye.